450, he had had 450 carries so far, and he hasn't fumbled once, you know, knock on wood. Can't say that. Yeah, I think that. That, you know, that's the thing that you want to hope continues, because if he if he can stay away from the mistakes, then he can be helpful to this team. If he makes mistakes, then we know what happens. Yeah, just cut him. And hope that's something, not, that fumbling is something that another guy that they have on the, uh, the, roster, the roster, Monty Ball, <laughs> he does that a lot. So hopefully they might have to do something. But maybe there's another back that is parallel to him, in 2006, Corey Dillon type of performance, maybe 50 yards a game, four yards a carry, albeit with some added versatility. But I, I do find interesting, if you see the video of today, you will notice that Steven Jackson was wearing uniform number 39, which happened yes, to be was. that they gave Monty Ball. So now maybe <laughs> the Patriots have already decided that Monty Ball is not necessarily somebody that uh, was really in the mix to begin with. But um, I, I do find it interesting that it didn't take long for Monty Ball to at least lose the jersey. <laughs> yeah, when you show up looking like Eddie Lacy, then that's not a good news for you. I would agree. Josh? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, what, I are, what are your John? final opinions on him? I agree with John. I mean, what, I don't. Uh, expectations are too high. He hasn't played all year. He and no one knows how in shape he is other than the New England Patriots who signed him but we as fans and we don't know enough to say he's going to go out there and run rush for 100 yards this week against the Jets or even 50 yards for that matter so uh, definitely I don't have high expectations for this week but I do think he'll get involved for sure. He provides depth to the running back position, and he also provides another option if the Patriots decide to become that kind of a team as we go into the month of January. Yeah. All right, guys, let's move on with Stephen Jackson. Oh, by the way, if you want to follow him, he's at xjax 39 I think it's the simplest Twitter handle I think you could ever remember. So make sure you follow him. He, he's already pretty hyped about it. He, he's already changed his profile to New England Patriots running back, and he posted that, that picture, I think, that, that went viral of his back. And he looks pretty in shape, at least from the back. We have <laughs> Later on this week, if he's this. in shape on the front. I'll, I'll say this to Steven Jackson. This is going to be his best opportunity to land the ultimate prize. Yep, that's Lombardi Trophy. You haven't had any of those in St. Louis and Atlanta. So, all right, guys, there's a question that I think that's been going around circles online. I want to get you guys' opinion on this. And, John, I think you alluded to this sort of in, when you were saying something. So I want you to talk about this again. You know, there are two games left just to go in the Patriots season. The Patriots have already locked up a first-round bye thanks to the Denver Broncos losing to the Steelers. So how do you think, let's let's put on your Belichick hoodies, come on, and I got you, I got myself an extra large, so everybody put on your Belichick hoodies, and what do you think that the Patriots, how do you think that the Patriots should handle these next two games? Do you think that they should go all out this week against the New York Jets, or do you think that, mm, you might as well just forget about this, and let's win on week 17, because again, all the Patriots need is one out of these two games to be a victory, and they will have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. So, John, what do you think they should do? I think they need to go all out and try and win this week. I think securing the number one seed is really what this is all about. So they have no travel issues uh, when it comes to the month of January. And then you can use the game in Miami any way you want to do it. You can uh, use it, as I I said earlier, uh, a preseason game. If you want to take that approach, you can take guys off the practice squad, elevate them for a game, and allow them the opportunity to play and not necessarily worry about really uh, all that much. Uh, You can uh, uh, game play for it in a very basic manner uh, because you'd be dealing with a team that uh, frankly is going to be thinking about going home uh, for the rest of the year. So uh, I think that uh, the approach should be to uh, try and win on on Sunday against uh, the Jets and uh, uh, take care of things that way and then use the Miami game as basically a uh, uh, a mini vacation slash business trip. Josh? They, <laughs> oh, they, I want them to win this game this week. I mean, <laughs> it's the Jets for one. And second of all, keeping the Jets out of the playoff to me would be advantageous for New England as as the, you never want to play your rival in the playoffs because you know you never know how that's going to work out and second of all Miami <laughs> New England hasn't had a very good history winning in Miami lately so that's another thing you had to keep in mind as bad as Miami is there's no guarantee that New England's going to walk into Miami and win that game with the way New England's played in Miami in the past few years so uh 
uh, New England needs to win this, try to win this week. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that New England's not going to give up on this game anyways. I don't believe that at all. So I don't really think there's actually a question here because I think New England's going to try to beat the Jets, and if they don't, they're going to try to beat the Dolphins. <laughs> well, God, let's, face it, you know, let's face it, guys. We're dealing with a head coach that doesn't believe in taking weeks off. Yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> Especially not against the New York Jets. Yeah. Well, I think against anybody, but you're probably right in that point. But I think against anybody, it's, uh, his philosophy, his his attitude is going to be the same, and that's try to win. Well, I was hoping that this segment was going to be a lot more uh, bombastic, but I guess it won't be because I agree with the most of people that that yeah. they uh, they absolutely have to take care of business this week because number one, it's the New York Jets, and if you're a Patriots fan, you hate the New York Jets. You want them to fail at every turn. I hate them with the uh, with the phrase of a thousand. Sons. But um, assuming that they beat the Jets, they can get three weeks off between sitting in Miami and the bye week. And, I mean, because really, let's face it, I know, Josh, that the Patriots do not play well in Miami. That's a proven fact. But they really, if you watch Miami, they've really gone home. They've, they've packed it. They're ready to go to Myrtle Beach because they, they do not look like a team that's ready to go. And I'm going, I go back to Cincinnati, who sat their starters against a Jets team in 2010 that they ended up having to face in the playoffs. And the Jets beat them there as well. So you can't underestimate the power of giving the team the belief or the thought in their mind that they can beat you. If Jets weren't in the playoff next, I wouldn't really care that much, but they're coming into Gillette Stadium, into Foxborough in January. I want them as tight as possible. So I don't want them to waltz into Week 17 as a must win. I want them to steal, every, steal up everything this weekend, get home field, and rest as many bodies as they possibly can in Week 17. I mean, this season has been traumatizing as far as injuries are concerned, so I think that they really need to take care of business. And like you said, Josh, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. Get home field and not the Jets out of the playoffs. Exactly. Yeah, and and I don't know if I agree with you on the Dolphins. I think they'll be motivated if they if they even have a close opportunity to, with this idea that they could take away New England having you know a home field advantage in the playoffs. I think that would be motivation enough, even though their season is over, to to make New England's life harder. I mean, that's the Dolphins' job from the remainder of the year is is you know to. <laughs> make things worse for the next two teams they play. So, Well, considering the turmoil that's going on in Miami and considering the fact that their interim head coach is probably going to be relieved of his duties after that, that last game is over and probably the rest of that coaching staff too, you do wonder just how motivated and focused they might be in that game. But if you're the Patriots, why even take the chance? Yeah, don't take the chance. Beat the Jets. <laughs> Exactly. Have everything wrapped up. And, John, yeah, but my opinion is it's Miami. If they're the Dolphins, they're, they're, again, they're probably in a club by, by 1 o'clock on that Sunday. I don't. I really honestly do not think that the Dolphins have anything left in that game. I understand that they're, they're division rivals, but really, I mean, if, there's, if I could say that, I didn't even say that about the Titans last week, and I thought I would, but I just don't see it. But perhaps I'm wrong because I have been. Oh, well, look, I, I think the Dolphins provide an interesting challenge in the sense that you have a roster that's going to be looking over their shoulders at what's going to happen next. You're going to have plenty of guys on that roster playing for jobs next year, whether it's in Miami or whether it's somewhere else. You've got an entire coaching staff that's now going to be doing the same thing, looking for their next opportunity based on the rumors that are out there about what might happen when uh, the season comes to an end. So there are plenty of distractions involved with the Miami Dolphins that are not necessarily good, but it's, it's a part of the football life when you are an under 500 team that have not uh, really achieved it the way they should have. They spent a lot of money in the offseason. It hasn't panned out, and so you expect these things to happen. I think all of that would certainly play into uh, that last game against the Patriots, but like I say, I mean, why even take the chance if you're in the England? If you can settle things now, secure that number one seed, have home field advantage throughout the playoffs, you can just go to Miami and, like I say, treat it as a preseason game and, and not necessarily care about the, uh, the result of it. And guys, while we're on the subject of playoffs and seeding, let's talk about the teams who, and this is a buzz, you know, topic of talk shows, which, you know, it really bugs me. I, we try not to be the normal Patriots talk show here, but I have to talk about it because, you know, everybody has a fear, everybody has a concern about the playoffs and who the Patriots might face. So I want to know what you guys think about the one or maybe two teams that you think that the Patriots might have trouble with if they have to face them in the playoffs. John, I'll start with you.
if you, well, I think it's Pittsburgh. You look at that wide receiving core, and you look at Ben Roethlisberger, and I think you saw it in the second half of that game last Sunday against Denver. When that team gets on a roll offensively, that's a very difficult machine to stop. And I do think that uh, that would be the one team that I would be concerned about. Their ability to vertically go down the field with those three wide receivers uh, could make your uh, life rather miserable for that Patriots secondary and even that front seven. Because if you can't get in Roethlisberger's face and you allow him the opportunity to stand back there with just a car of a secondary up that he could still do, that could make for a long afternoon. Josh, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. The the one team, uh, I I would say another another team, and I don't I don't really know why. Um, I I a little bit fear Kansas City because of what happened last year. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. But um, the team I fear most is Pittsburgh. I, I don't think Kansas City has the run attack anymore with Charles out, and, uh, and I mean they did add M- Macklin, but they still their pass game isn't all that great. So, but something about Kansas City does scare me. I think it, a lot. Just think back to last year kind of um, causes me distress because I went to that game in Kansas City and unfortunately I had to hear those loud Kansas City fans break a record and, and boo, boo us Patriots fans out of the stadium. But um, the Steelers are the team that would provide the most of a challenge to New England, I think, with all the teams left. And even though the Broncos beat us this year, I actually think New England would take care of business against the Broncos. And, and of course, you have the Texans who are now leading the AFC South. And we know what happened when we played the Texans. So uh, we have a lot of, we've played a lot of these teams that we might be playing again, um, other than Cincinnati and, and, uh, Kansas City. So uh, we have an idea of what's going to happen, in a way. <laughs> well, I was going to say Kansas City, but now i changed my mind totally. So, and I'm going to say, again, the New York Jets. I mean, every team has its strengths and their weaknesses. And really, I don't fear any team coming into Foxborough, and it really should be other teams fearing us. I think that the New York Jets, they're the division rival, and they've played our offense very well in recent years. I, I wouldn't hate it if the Patriots ended the season this weekend, like we talked about just about a minute ago. But I'm not a fan of playing the same team three years in a row three year three times in one year. I think that they know each other too well and the Jets, I mean, we all know about what happened in 2010. You know, the Patriots blew out the Jets. I think it was 45-3 to in that Monday night football game. And then they had their problems at home against the Jets in the playoffs. I, I just feel very weary about that. And knowing what we know about some of the four, um, current employees over at 345 Park Avenue in New York City and the team that they love to root for, I, that just there's too many scenarios where I think that the New York Jets could so doomed for the Patriots as far as I'm concerned. What do you guys think yeah, about it? As, as John brought up last week, if you look at the last two games here at Tampa on the schedule, Baltimore and Cleveland, I just don't see the Steelers in a scenario where they lose to either one of those teams, uh, which would eliminate the Jets from playoff consideration right off the bat. And, that's, well, and, and how interesting is it that the AFC is going to have potentially one 10-win team that's not going to make the playoffs? Yeah, well, the thing is, obviously, if uh, Kansas City were to lose and the Jets were to win the next two games, then obviously the Jets would be in. But um, Well, we're I assuming don't... that the Jets would win Sunday, which is obviously something we don't want to see. So uh, Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't I mean, think... this is really, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is really going to be the Jets throwing the kitchen sink of the Patriots and doing everything they can and pulling every trick in the book to uh, to try and pull this game up because their last game is in Buffalo, and you would tend to think that that's a game that they might be able to handle and at least finish 10 and 6. All right, so while we're at, uh, I hate saying the word Jets. It just gives me the shivers all over myself. So but we have to talk about them because it's our objective this week. And they've seemed to have figured out an identity on offense over the past few weeks. It seems that they're a pass-oriented team with Brian Fitzpatrick, who I happen to respect. I like him a, a whole lot. He kind of reminds me of Chad Pennington as far as he, you know, he's not going to impress you as far as a quarterback like Tom Brady or Drew Brees or somebody like that, but he does the job. Uh, but he does it well. He scrambles when he has to. He can run a little bit. He can make all the throws. He make put them in, into tight spaces. So I really like Ryan Fitzpatrick. And they can open up on the run any, any time. Bilal Powell, who thank you for giving me my <laughs> Super Bowl win in fantasy. He, he's a backup running back who usually comes in only on shotguns. And I think he's been pretty good. He's got good burst in him. Chris Ivory, who he started off well when the Patriots played him last time around. He really hasn't been that way in the last month of the season. And, of course, we all know about Brandon Marshall. We all know about Eric Decker and the success that he had against some of the players on the last time the Patriots met. So 
John, what do you think about the Jets' offense, and how do you think the Patriots match up on defense against them? Look, I think the Jets have enough weapons to really create problems for the Patriots. You talked about the two wide receivers in, in Decker and, and Marshall, and I think that the, those are two guys that can really cause havoc in the secondary, and the, so the Patriots' secondary is going to have to be at their best to, to make sure that those guys just don't uh, cause problems and, and get wide open and uh, and be able to get yards after catches. Uh, they have a, a good enough running game and power and ivory that they can really create balance that could be an issue. And look, 